today I'm going to be using up some Christmas fabric that's been sitting in my fabric stash for a while now and I'm going to create a sewing project that is perfect for the holidays. This project is beginner friendly and you'll love how simple this is because it only uses strips of fabric. Now you'll need three fabrics for this sewing project and you can see here that I ended up with two different colour combinations, one with blue and one with red, because I'm going to be making two of these. I'll be using the blue in this tutorial and I'll show you how the red one turned out at the end of the video. Now we're going to be making a table runner, so we're going to start by cutting one blue strip that measures six and a half inches, one black strip that measures three and a half inches, and one white strip that measures one and a half inches. Now we'll have all the measurements and step-by-step -step instructions on our blog, so check for the link in the description field below. And if you decide to sign up to our newsletter, you can get a free downloadable PDF pattern for this table runner. Now that our strips are cut, I'm going to take the white strip and place it over the blue with the right sides of the fabric facing, and I'll pin it all the way along the edge. You'll notice as I get to the end that the strips don't meet up, but it doesn't matter as we'll be trimming the ends off in the next step. Once the strips are pinned together, we're going to sew along the edge with a quarter inch seam. Now that the two strips are sewn together, I'm going to set the seam and press it to the dark side of the fabric. I'm doing that because I'm using white and I don't want the dark fabrics to show under the white. Now I'm ready to sew the black strip onto the white fabric. So just like before, I will pin it with the right sides facing and sew along the edge with a quarter inch seam. And here's just a quick tip. When you are sewing strips together, you turn the fabric around and sew from the opposite direction for each strip. This will help to prevent bowing, which can happen when you sew a lot of strips together. We're only sewing three here, so you shouldn't get that problem. Now I just need to press the seam, making sure to press it towards the dark side of the fabric. And you can see the final result here and how the seams are pressed. Now we're ready to cut this strip set into pieces and I'll just trim off one of the edges first to get a straight edge and then I'll flip the fabric around so that it's in the correct position for me to cut and then I'll line up my ruler on the six and a half inch mark and before I cut I also like to line up the horizontal lines as well. This ensures that you get a nice straight cut. So that's our first piece done, and we're going to continue cutting more of these all the way down the strip, so we end up with six blocks in total. And you will end up with a piece of leftover fabric on the end. Now I am going to be sewing these together, but I think I want to break them up a bit with some of the white fabric. So I'm going to cut a couple more one and a half inch strips, and from these I'm going to subcut them into five pieces, measuring ten and a half inches. So I'll line my ruler up on the ten and a half inch mark and cut. And if you don't have a ruler this large, you can use your mat to cut the pieces, but I highly recommend getting one of these rulers. It's one of my new favourites, and I'll put a link in the description field below for it. And before we continue with the tutorial, I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Craftsy, your online resource for all things creative. Craftsy offers a membership that grants you access to over 2,000 classes in over 20 categories, including quilting, sewing, cooking, baking, painting, drawing, and so much more. I'm currently working through a Quilting with Rulers course by Amy Smart. It's something I've been wanting to do for years now, and I figured it would be a good way to get my feet wet before transitioning into full free motion quilting. But Craftsy has me covered with that too. Just take a look at all of these free motion quilting classes for both beginners and the more advanced. I really have no excuse now. I'm also excited to check out this class. Now my dream is to own a long arm quilting machine and this walks you through how to choose the best machine to fit your needs as well as showing you the basics of using a long arm quilting machine. So if like me you'd like to learn some new skills then the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the video description below will get a full year of premium membership to Craftsy for only $1.49. So I have my five pieces of sashing cut and my six blocks ready to go. And then I'm going to lay out the blocks and arrange the pieces like so. Now don't miss this step as you'll end up doing what I did, which was sewing the sashing to the wrong side, which resulted in a lot of unpicking. 
once the blocks are arranged in the right manner, I'm going to lay out my sashing pieces in between the blocks. And then we're going to sew the sashing onto each of these blocks using a quarter inch seam. You will have one block remaining, so just set that aside as we'll be using it in the next step. Once the pieces are sewn, we need to lay them out again. And I'll just quickly show you the back of one of these so that you can see how we've pressed the seams. And now we're going to sew these pieces together. So I'll place this piece over the first piece and sew with a quarter inch seam. And I'll repeat that with the second two. And then with the last two here, you can see that piece that didn't have any sashing. Well, now it gets sewn onto this piece here. Now that they're sewn, we need to lay them out once again. Just make sure that they're in the right position and then sew the remaining pieces together. You can see how that looks now after we've sewn them together and I think it looks lovely. Now all we need to do is cut three more white strips but this time we'll cut them wider at two and a half inches by the width of fabric. And then I'm going to subcut these into smaller pieces to complete our border. Two long pieces for the sides and two smaller pieces for the top and bottom. Your table runner should measure 41 and a half inches in length at this point, but if it doesn't, then cut your border pieces to match the length of your piece. Now we're going to sew on the long pieces first, so I'll just pin both of them in place and then sew along each side with a quarter inch seam. And once the side borders are sewn, I'll give them a press and then take the top and bottom pieces and sew them on. So the top of our table runner is now complete and now we need to add our backing and batting. Now in terms of quilting, I just did some simple straight line quilting with some diagonal lines in the larger squares and some straight lines in the black squares and then I stitched in the ditch around the outside edge. And now we come to the best part, trimming the quilt. This is always so satisfying. Now you just need to line up your ruler along the edge. Make sure it lines up with the seam lines of your quilt and trim. Now as the mat isn't long enough, you will find it easier to trim up to a certain point and then move the ruler along, making sure to line up your ruler as you go. And now repeat trimming the piece on the remaining three sides. And there you go, our table runner is finished. And as you can see, I've sewn on the binding. If you would like to know how to sew binding onto a table runner, we have a full step-by-step -step video which I will link in the description field below. And as promised, here's the table runner made using red designs. I love how this came together. These are so easy to make and I've already put aside another three fabrics to make a third one, but this time in non-Christmas fabrics. So thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed this tutorial, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more.